Hey everybody, Brian the Wild Armenian, rat ride car pork mechanic, real estate investor, whatever you want to call me. Don't call me late for lunch. <laughs> hey everybody, good morning. It's chilly here in North Central Florida, 50 degrees out here. Brr. <laughs> I want to move south, somewhere on the coast. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll take Central Florida every day, take it of hurricanes. Hey, you know, something burns my butt up, and um, <clears throat> and then, no, it ain't a flame this high. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the title of this is Some People Will Never Retire Because They Listen to This. Mm. And uh, I like, and I'm going to pick on Dave Ramsey, I'm sorry. He, I like Dave Ramsey, and I listen to a lot of his videos, and he's got great... And he helps a lot of people. Great advice and, and you know, get people out of financial traps. And, and sometimes I listen to the show and it cracks me up. Some of these people, oh my Lord. But you know what? I was guilty as a young person of all those mistakes. I'm going to raise my hand. You know, I'm being honest with you. I've had, I've, I've been bankrupt twice and, and, um, failed businesses and uh, divorces and cancer and all that stuff that, you know, just wasn't good. You know, it wasn't pretty. I retired at 65. I'm retired. I, last night I worked. I was on a roll. I worked on this old truck. You know, I'm trying to get it restored, you know, and I'm having a blast now, you know, and, and, uh, so what I'm, what I'm getting at here, sometimes if I listen to the shows, you know, and you get, and he's got these other folks on his, on his network that work with him, these younger people, and they have their own little show spun out of the Dave Ramsey solution or whatever it's called. But a lot of them say, well, one of them said, well, you got to have a couple of million or three million dollars to retire. And bullshit. You know, I'm sorry. You know, um, it's just that's why people ain't going to retire. Some people get caught up into that. I heard that stuff back then, too, you know. And, um, y you know, there's this one guy uh, I listened to and uh, he had great the debt free doctor. I hope I said that right. And I'm going to put him down in my description on his a link for him. And uh, he went through the Dave Ramsey. He got himself, he was a doctor, and I guess student loans and everything. He was up to, dead up to his ear. And he, is, he admits Dave Ramsey helped him. You know, he talks about it. And uh, he also, he got to the point, though, where he was stalemate, I guess. I guess that's the right word. Uh, watch his video, all I can say. He's got, got great advice in how he's in. He's making good money. He's real estate investing, you know where he was using leveraging money, you know, borrowing, where Dave Ramsey's against that, you know. And and I get if you're in debt the first time and you're over your head and you you learn simple, you know, what Dave teaches, get out of debt, rip those credit cards up. Absolutely. I'm for that. Uh, I think what what's, uh, this guy had, selective, uh, this... Um, how do you say that? Dis distortion? Yeah, selective distortion. Basically, people like Dave Ramsey ends up coming across to some people, you know. And, and I agree with that to a set, you know. Um, you know, I talked about all the bad things happened to me when I was younger. And there was no way, no way I could start putting a 401k together in the time frame because my clock was running out if I wanted to retire. And what did I do? I leveraged money. I borrowed. I took uh, uh, loans out, uh, conventional loans on property, and and bought real estate and fixed them up, sold them, made money. They call it flipping. And then everybody got into the game, you know. And I had to compete with that. I had to learn how to bid, make contracts, and try to beat people to the punch buying property. Boy, that was challenging. I learned a little trick there. I offer a little bit more than the closing on on. Uh, foreclosed houses and now it's so like you know there a couple of years ago everybody was doing that buying property period but you know that's the things i had to do i had to think outside the box legally too and pay taxes on that you know and there's th there's all kinds of things uh like that that you know people listen to and it just stops them because they say don't ever get in that no both you can use good debt you know i think robert kiyosaki talks about asset you know uh, um, what do you call that? Uh, assets and liabilities. Well, liability would be something like, you know, you go buy a watch and charge for it. But an asset where you go out 
and, and uh, you buy an apartment complex and you make money off of that, off of other people's money. And see, that's where a lot of people don't realize you can make money off of money. You know, no saying is, well, it takes money to make money. Right. Absolutely. It takes money to make money. Okay. There you go. And how do you use money? You borrow it. If you don't have anything, now if you have it, you, you do it. But of course, you have, to, you have to have a mindset. And a mindset, you know, here's the ones I like. You know, back in 19, I think it's 1935, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, he wrote a book. And he did a lot of research. He went and talked and interviewed people like Dale Carnegie and, and, and moguls back in the days. And he said, you know, the only thing that stops people from success is their mind. And, and that's so true. Uh, that's the roadblocks people put on there. Anything, anything. And you listen to people. It's just like the economy. We got an election going on. That's a roadblock. You could, you could wait yourself down. Now think about it. Napoleon Hill's book sold Billions, I guess. I don't know. Millions, billions, whatever. But I mean, and it made lots of people wealthy reading that book. Even generations before, the, you know, after, that weren't even born yet, okay, made money listening to his principles. And you know what? It's weird. That book was bought out in the Great Depression. I mean, that, my mom, the old folks would talk about, that was something that people never seen. I mean, having an apple, my mom would tell me, was like, I don't know, getting a lottery, hitting a lottery ticket you know, for that week. I mean, you're really it, a big thing. Nowadays, we think, oh, that rotten's apple. Oh, well, just go buy a bag full of them, you know? And, and you know, we, we, we then we complain about the price of them. But so, you know, it's just like... It's limitations. People listen to some people and they get roadblocks. They go listen to the news, the election. How can anybody make a living? How can anybody get rich in a world like this? How can anybody get retired in a world like this? Now, uh, Napoleon Hill said something. If you listen to his principles, you know, you, you're wealthy to your own limits, to your imagination. Now, there's a guy, Cheaper RV Living. I'm going to put him down. Uh, and they got a lot of people that are living on Social Security. Uh, they just can't work. They got ailments, and they're just struggling. And they, they're living in campers and stuff like that. Some people look down on that. But see, they're, they're thinking outside the box. I don't have to do that, thank God. But, you know, they're doing it. So they're independent. And a lot of them, they say they're happy. Who am I to say? Uh, you got Sarasota Tim living in a trailer. He seems to be happy. You know, he's making shoot, three videos a day. People are watching him, following him. Who's to say, you know? So there you go. Whatever people say, you know, you got to take what, what you need and leave the rest. You know, take what works for you and leave the rest. I'm not, you know what? I'm going to make a disclaimer. I'm no financial advisor. I'm not a real estate broker or a realtor. I'm a real estate investor, okay? I'm a mechanic, carport mechanic, okay? And, you know, I ain't the best at that either, you know? I do what I can do, get by with these things. But that's my point, you know? And, and you know, and then a lot of people say, well, that guy on the Ramsey show is right. Think about it, Brian. You got a... You got to have at least millions of dollars to retire. Rents this much and that much, and the lifestyle. My lifestyle don't change your lifestyle. How's that? <laughs> a lot of people let their lifestyle. Do you need to go to follow football games and and race car events and have to see a concert every month? My lord, you know, change your lifestyle, whatever that is. How to and why? Do a little inventory on that. How? Why? Why am I doing this? Why do I have to? Why can't I? You know, these are things you ask yourself. You know, it's up to the individual. You are the making of your own future. Nobody else. With the help of the Lord above, you can seek freedom, financial freedom, whatever that is. There's no such thing. I know financial freedom. You're always going to have bills or electric bills and stuff like that. Financial independence, what I should say. But you can do it. You know, and if a book was written back in 1935 in the Great Depression and it's made people wealthier, 
and generations wealthier, you know, it can be done no matter what what environment we're in today. So with that, there's a lot of things important today. And before I start this, please like and describe. I don't get a lot of people uh, uh, liking my videos or describing and sharing. Please, I need all the help I can get. I'm a struggling, I'm a starving Armenian. <laughs> I love it. Hey, anyway, hey, uh, a lot of things important today. My Lord Jesus Christ, amen. My wife, you know, oh, I better say that. My kids, I love them. My family, my friends. United States, yeah, salute. And you people, take care of yourself and God bless you.